is. Eight o'clock. There it is. Jungle Voodoo. Start. Hey! Yay! Hey, everyone. Welcome to Lawrence. Lawrence away this week. I am your host for this week, Catboy Kumhua. I'm going to try and entertain you for the next hour or so. I have no idea if we have any comedians. Um, I have heard nothing from Doc Run. I've received no messages from him. Um, I have no idea if anyone else has shown up. You've got at yeah. least one. I'll, I'll one? get up. Uh, well, yeah. Oh, well, Jay Wheels. We got Jay Wheels. All right. We got Jay Wheels. Yeah, Yay, and, and Jay and Cat Wheels. Boy. Hooray. Cat Boy, Hooray we do Jay believe Wheels. that we believe that Doc Run will come in. We hope he at least okay. believes he will later on in the in the hour, sometime after 7 okay. or 5. I'll tell you what. If, if he shows up any time past like 8.30 or a little later than that, he can have the stage for the rest of the night if he wants to. Because I know that he always has a lot of material. Yeah. And he hasn't been true. here for a long time. So uh, I, I will gladly hand it back over to him if he wants to regale us for 20 minutes of entertainment. Now, when I started tonight, when we had the uh, the pre-show thing, I, I'm trying to get everyone to guess what is the one thing that I went to New York City for. I went to, what was it? My dad said I wanted to go to New York City because he had to do some business thing with Ontario Hydro. I said, I want to come with you. I want to go to New York because something came out in the summer of 1981. It was August. This thing that I was so worked up over, and I think I have a copy of it in Second Life. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, is it in there? Come on. Oh, come on. It has to be in there. Oh, wait. Let's, let's try typing this in. Bingo. There it is. Left hip. Add. See if you can see it. Can you see that? By my left hip. The Walkman. That was the yeah, summer. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That was the summer. It came out in July of 1981, the Sony Walkman. They announced it on the news. Everyone was making a big deal about it. And we wanted, and of course, everyone wanted to get their own radios and stuff like that. Uh, we were trying to get our albums. We were trying to switch from albums over to tape decks because uh, everyone was getting boom boxes and stuff. And when the Sony Walkman came out in the summer of 1981, there was only one place that I knew of in the whole world where you could buy it in North America. It was definitely not available in Canada. We didn't see it until the year after. And when we bought it, it would it would cost 50% more. So if it was on sale for $100 in Canada, it would always be on sale for $150. If you ever look at a magazine where it's published in both America and the United States, take a look at the price difference from top and bottom. It always gets marked up by about 30 or 40 percent. So I mm. went to New York City with my dad. And, of course, my dad wants to – he dragged me up every freaking tall building in the whole goddamn island. The Rockefeller Center, the Empire State Building, the World Trade Center. Um, what's that building um, that uh, David Letterman shows so in? Oh, Chrysler, oh. the Chrysler Building. Yes, we did. We went up the Chrysler Building. Honestly, I wish we would have went to a museum or something like that. I thought that probably would have been. I mean, the only place yeah. I went to that I that I really liked was um, I went to Macy's, the toy Macy's store, because cool. of course Lego. You know, the Lego thing was there. And then we went to. By the way, this took a whole week. We didn't do all this in one day. You can't do that in a day. We were staying in New York for a week, and uh, we went to uh, the United Nations Building. And That's I'll bet cool. you, Doc. That's right totally and. Cool. And Fran, I'm glad you're paying attention because I bet you're the one that's going to know what I'm talking about. We went to the UN building, and pendulum, right, pendulum. right, right across the street from the UN building was the largest electronic supplier in New York City, and it was not the big name ones that you see these days, like Best Buy, Future Shop. They didn't exist for another ten years. It was this place. It was Pendulum. I went into, and of course, I told my dad, I want to go to Pendulum. He's like, what do you want to go to some stupid electronic store for? We went all the way to New York, and you just want to buy a stupid Sony Walkman. I spent an entire summer working in a golf, I was caddying in a golf place. Golf place. <laughs> in a, I was a caddy, I was a golf caddy, to save up $100 just so I could save up enough money to go in and buy a Sony Walkman. So I spent a whole week being dragged around to my father all over Halatia and back again. The blend, end of the week. We finally get to the store I want to go to. We get in his place. We speak to the salesman. And he said, some Russian ambassador just came in here and bought every fucking Sony Walkman and boombox in the entire store. We are cleaned out. 
Like, son of a bitch. I mean, if they didn't have any Sony Walkmans, I would have at least bought a boombox as a consolation prize because they're still going to cost more in Canada. I could have bought a really good one for $100. said, nope, we didn't have anything. Everything was cleaned out. Everything that was find interesting. The VIC-20s were sold out. They sold out all their computers. <laughs> remember the yeah. VIC-20? Okay, one. does anyone? Yeah, remember the little Tandys? Right, the yep. little handy, the little handheld computers. They were sold. They were completely sold out of that. I would have bought one of those. I think I can get one of those for less than a hundred when it was brand new. So the Vic twenties were sold out. The camera was sold out. And it's like, oh, for God's sake! I came all this freaking way. This is all I wanted, and no more. And uh, but I bet you, um, I'm wondering if anyone remembers this. But the the very first versions of any Sony WAP, and it came out in the 1980s, were made out of solid straight circuitry, which means they were the ones that didn't break. Everything that came out after that, they were all pieces of crap, no matter which how expensive they were. Like I bought an IKEA for uh, I, was that IKEA IKEA I can't I don't know how to pronounce it for like 160 dollars. It broke on me in the second week. And the only one that lasted was the one I'm wearing now. That was a sports Walkman, and I hated it. I thought it was ugly. I never liked it, but it was the only one that lasted for a couple of years, so I had no choice. You had to buy it. Anyway, so let's get on to what's been going on in the news lately. Now, does anyone see what's behind me? Rob what's Ford behind me? The, or the news shuttle? Oh, it's, it's, the, uh, it's not the news shuttle. I have no idea what this is, really. It's just some artist representation of some sort of thing to Mars. But anyway... Um, NASA. Yeah, we were talking about that while you were gone. Furnace gets B? Okay. Um, NASA made a huge announcement today at 4 in the afternoon uh, that they're going to start sending their own manned missions into outer space. Uh, they have, what was it, what did they announce? They have, uh, they have contracts with both Boeing and Elon Musk. And I have money, by the way, invested in the Elon Musk, so if anyone wants to throw a little <laughs> money that way to get some stock you'll be helping me out you'll probably help out Laura too I bet she's got stock in there as well but when they announced it today this is what happened to me I, um, I, I, they said that they were going to announce it for this afternoon they said great big announcement had something to do with taking up manned missions again I said I know what this is about right so let me show you where I went I'm going to show you a little here it is this is where I went for the announcement, right? So you know I'm not making this up. NASA was making this great big announcement, and I wanted to watch it live, and it wasn't on the TV, so I had the TV on at 4 o'clock. Well, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, Obama was talking about dealing with this whole ISIS problem. And I thought, Ebola. oh shit, well, right, and uh, and the Ebola problem, and I thought, well, Chris, where's the NASA announcement? So I go I go to this, uh, the website where the whole thing was announced in the first place, and there's a bunch of links there, and I'm going, oh, it's on live stream, right? Now, if you'll notice, there's a whole bunch of links there near the bottom. I picked the one at the very top, and then I had to fill out the stupid form. And I went, oh, god damn it, I already have a live stream account. But I haven't used it in two or three years. It's probably expired, so I have to start over from scratch, right? So I fill out the form all over again. Right at the very bottom of the form, it says, why do you think it's a good idea to go to Mars? I'm saying, oh, I don't know. I'll be entertained for a while. I'll make for good TV, inspire people. And I click on it. It says, your application to... Uh, be an astronaut for Mars has been accepted. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? God damn it, my life just turned. I don't want to go to Mars. No. Uh, you don't? Oh, hey, man. hey, cat boy, all you got to do is show up in that avatar and you'll be instantly rejected. <laughs> don't worry about it. You know what? It, this could backfire because they're saying don't worry we're sending you home so i'm not going to mars no we are going to mars we're sending you home when the hell did my life become a don knox movie did anyone see that movie <laughs> i just linked it by the way the reluctant astronaut of course right that poor guy who winds up going in outer space and he doesn't want to go this is how this sort of thing actually happens you know, you got to fill, because I swear to God, there's this form you fill out, and it looks exactly like every other form you fill out on the internet. What's your name? What's that? Blah, blah, blah. It's going to send me a bunch of junk mail and stuff like that. Fill out a little form, say this, say hello. And no, I'm great. I'm going to be sent to Mars. Look, I get dizzy when I'm standing on top of a stepladder just to fetch my mom's casserole dish. She had to practically <laughs> catch me last time when I had a dizzy spell. 
You want to send me like 50 million miles up in outer space? That's not happening. Ugh. Seriously, man. Avatar <laughs> plus talking like you just did? They're not <laughs> sending you anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, they are, but it's not Mars. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, anyway, uh, so as a word of warning to all of you, when you click on those links, be aware of what you're filling out, or you could wind, you know, you could wind up like Don Knotts. By the way, I have to watch that movie again someday. I'm not, I absolutely love Don Knotts. Do you remember that he came out with a bunch? Do anyone remember he came out with a bunch of movies in the 1960s? He was like the Jim Carrey of the 1960s. Because there was uh, the Reluctant Astronaut. There was one where he was a playboy. He was literally Hugh Hefner in one movie. The Love God. Um, there was The Amazing Mr. Limpet. That was the one where he was a little, cute little animated fish. They tried to remake that, by the way, with Jim Carrey. And someone said, the animation is so creepy, the only thing we're going to do is make children cry. Mm. We're not remaking <laughs> this movie. <laughs> I know. Oh, my gosh. But yeah, um, for a while, Don Knotts was the bomb when comedy was uh, comedy was uh, the thing in the '60s. And if you really love '60s comedy, where it's just totally harmless popcorn kind of movies, just watch those Don Knotts movies. That's exactly the, that that type of film. Absolutely love that sort of thing. Now, speaking of comedy, let's get back to what's been going on. I have some terrible news uh, about Rob Ford. Is anyone? <laughs> Rob Ford, I'm standing on his face right now. Poor Rob he has, Ford. He He's has dro- sort well, of must have regained his now. sanity. The, the, the <laughs> doctors just told him he was going to live 40 more years. That would be the worst news ever. <laughs> ever! <laughs> and look at, look at the look uh, on his face. Man. Oh, come on. We we need this guy around. Come on. we got to oh, hang on. Comedian, to definitely. The last news I want to hear is he's coming down with cancer. I want him to stick around. I want him to hang on to that job until... Hell itself freezes over, so we have something to make fun of. But the, the real tragedy, resign. yeah. The real tragedy is, well, you know that he he's resigning. Well, no, sorry, no, I'm so, he's not resigning. He's he's mayor until you know the devil himself drags him out of that office. But he uh, he's not running for re-election because he has a health scare going on with his stomach, where he's got a gut problem. And probably <laughs> has something to do with having a 55 inch waistline, but um, <laughs> no, apparently he's got some sort of tumor in his stomach. It's like I guess he does have an excuse for uh, for for being you know so bloated. It's like oh, oh it's, I'm not fat. It's just a giant tumor. <laughs> but um, and so apparently he's withdrawing for this reason. And the big tragedy about it is that his brother Doug is taking his place. And I'm thinking, that's just the most awful news ever, because Doug Ford is not nearly as funny as his brother Rob. He's just a boring <laughs> douchebag. Well, there's, there's nothing to worry. This, no, this is really bad news for comedians all over. It's like, oh, no, not Doug. He's, a, he's, a, like, he's like a lead balloon. He's just like not going anywhere. You know, because Rob was just, you know, there was so much there to work with. But a lot of people, they're saying that this is incredibly fishy. The timing of the whole thing, and a lot of people are wondering if this is fishy. the whole. It's the, they're wondering if the whole thing is staged, and I'll tell you what they're pointing at, and that is, it's the fact that he just happened to come down with this illness right before he started, right before the re-election is 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 to be going, before it, it gets up and gets going, and another thing that they find incredibly fishy is that all of the posters that you see vote for uh, Ford. None of the paraphernalia that they printed says vote for Rob Ford. It all says vote for Ford. <laughs> That's an Clever. amazing coincidence. That means that when Doug Ford takes over, they don't have to reprint anything. They'll just leave the original posters up on the on the lawns and everywhere because they still work. A lot of people saying, nope, that's just an amazing coincidence. It just they, they just <laughs> Yeah, of course I did. Cigar is just a good smoke. Yeah, I know. But uh, that's that's the bad news about about poor, poor, poor comedians, poor us. And 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 I think they was a, they spoke to to uh, to to Rob Ford, and he's really trying to pour on the drama of this whole thing. He's playing it up like crazy, and he's saying, "I guess God wants me somewhere else." Look, considering how many comedians died this year, God is full up on laughs right now. <laughs> doesn't want you for anything. 
We got tons of comedians up there right now. And Tanya with Joan and Robin. Yeah. And who was the other comedian that passed away earlier this year? Remember he was the huge fat guy? Not Louis C.K. because he's still with us, but the other one. The one who does like a lot of pasta jokes. Anyone know what I'm talking about? But he passed away earlier. Yeah, I know. Dom he's, DeLuise, somebody, he, yeah. he's sort of like the 21st century Dom DeLuise. He passed away last spring. I can't remember his name, but he was he had several specials on Netflix, and he was really funny. Is that was it Rodney? No, Rodney Dangerfield. Rodney has been dead ago. for years. That's, yeah. that's not Rodney. He passed away a while ago. Anyway, I got another funny story I want to tell you. Um, in Russia. What's going on? Oh, God. You know, lots of crazy things going on in Russia. Um, a church or the owner of a church um, said that they needed some sort of lawn ornament or something, a decoration for their, for their front yard. And a jet fighter company gave them a MiG-25 that they can use as a lawn ornament. <laughs> now, here's a funny story about that. They're not the first person to actually do this. Does anyone know who Jeremy Clarkson is? The guy who's a big host on Top Gear? He gets in trouble for having a big mouth all the time. Jeremy Clarkson? Big Top Gear guy. Okay, now we, Jeremy Clarkson loves everything to do with cars. He loves jet planes. He loves jet fighters. He loves going fast and little rockets and crazy inventions and builds things and whatnot. But anyway, this is like... Imagine being the wife of Jeremy Clarkson, all the, all the women. I need you to envision this story. He went out and he got himself one of the largest jet fighters that were ever built in the history of building jet fighters, and that was the British Electric Fighter. Oh, what was the full name? The British Electric something or other. It was the big fighter they had that looks like a giant arrow that was built in the, in the late 1950s. And this thing is like a 40,000-pound plane. By the way, your average fighter, like an F-14 or an F-18, weighs about 20 to 30,000 pounds. This was a 40,000-pound plane that he got, and he put it in his front yard. And there's his poor wife driving home from work one day saying, What the hell have you done to my garden? <laughs> you stuck what? a 40,000-pound <laughs> plane right smack in the middle of my garden. And all he said was, Look, if you're marrying me, you knew what you were getting into. She won't be his wife for long. Don't worry <laughs> about that. Listen, if she's put up with this much for for, for God knows how many years, uh, I, I imagine she's gonna have to. She's gonna learn to live with the airplane. And when when they put the airplane in her yard, by the way, do you know what a forty thousand pound plane does when you leave the gear down and you drag it over your yard? It digs a giant trench into your yard, and he just said, "Well, just get a spade, honey, and just fix it." Just put the dirt back in the hole that we dug up. Oh, my gosh. And I just thought that was a little crazy. So, uh, Let's see. Boeing and SpaceX have the contracts. I'm a little bored that Boeing's getting all the contracts. They've got so many these days. I just wish they would, they would go to somebody else. Dogs have become inseparable. I, sh oh, I don't care about that. Oh, my God. In France... Uh, does anyone heard about this crazy thing they have going in France where people eat an entire bird whole? Have you seen no. that? You put the t uh, they have this crazy thing where they take a uh, like a sparrow. It's not a sparrow, but it's something very similar. It's this tiny bird, and they cook it whole. They don't even pluck the feathers off or nothing, right? They kill the thing by drowning it in alcohol. Then they stuff butter and, and turnips or something inside its gut or whatever until it's ready to explode. They cook the whole thing whole, and then when people eat it, just to uh, just to like hide, just 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 to keep the scent in, they put a towel over their heads. They put a towel over their heads so that their head is covered in a towel while they're eating this tiny bird. And you're supposed to eat the whole thing in one shot. Well, that's what they do with the truffles. Yes. So it's it's it, it's got a precedent, but apparently. This thing was banned because they said it was an incredibly cruel thing to do to a bird. Yeah. Because apparently it's still it's still alive when they, they're doing all these horrible things to it. Because they don't bother killing it and cleaning it and, and plucking the feathers off. So they're bringing this thing back. And I thought, 
just how hard up do you got to be for a cuisine experience if you're willing to eat an entire bird without even plucking it first? I mean, isn't that going to be hard to pass? I mean, think about we would never do later, that. Yeah. We would never do that in Texas <laughs> unless we could deep fry it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you deep fry the whole thing and it's all oh, hey, Frenchy. Then no, then no, no, works. no, no. The boss is totally Start right. With things in France for for snails to start looking good to them. I know. Well, do you notice that I like everything escargo. everything that is cuisine today in France used to be peasant food, like snails are peasant food, truffles are peasant food, Rocket a lot of paste. Yeah, uh, a lot of uh, pastries were actually peasant food when they were, you know, because pastries are just made out of flour and water and it's just dough, you know, with a lot of sugar thrown in. And a lot of that was peasant food. But these days, it's now worth thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. So think of it. Whatever pe is peasant food today might be considered cuisine that's worth thousands of dollars tomorrow. So go out and buy yourself a bunch of McDonald's hamburgers. They never decay anyway. A couple of years from now, they'll be worth a couple of grand. You never know. <laughs> hey. Anyway, I'm going to surrender the stage to Jamie Jordan for a while. Wow, Jamie. Jamie, it's all Yay. yours. Get up hey, here, Jamie. Boy. Yay! Yay! I really should have asked for a heads up, dude. You're lucky I was there. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's no. like, dude, I'll just no, 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 no. I'm out of stuff. So, no, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get behind you and then I'm going to kick you up there. That's what I'm going to do. I got a <laughs> kicking gesture. I got to warn you. Move it. No, no. I'm, I'm all good. I'm all good. <laughs> get up on that stage. I'm going to bully you so, around. So... Nice to be here, folks. Rides are all here. Woo! I, I, I have. Which is talking to us. And I am, I am debuting it here because I think I figured it out. I have always wanted to be in the military. Always. I'm just one of those people that has always wanted to serve my country. But, of course, they won't let me because I'm handicapped. <laughs> and I've, you know never that? Okay. I've never really understood why. Because let's think about it. You can get a bunch of guys in electric wheelchairs, put them up in a plane, make them paratroopers. You roll them out of the plane. And they just land on the enemy like Super Mario Bros. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then when you hit the ground, you just strap a couple of uh, M16s on the armrest, and you're good to go. It's like and a little it would, tank. We would literally be the the a absolute truth of something called Rolling Thunder. We would be that. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling oh Thunder. Gosh. Yes. And the one thing that nobody ever thinks about is that I I don't care what religion you are, I don't care what ethnicity you are, not we would never lose a man because I don't care what religion you are, you are not going to shoot a guy in a wheelchair because it don't matter what religion it is, you shoot a guy in a wheelchair, you're going to hell. <laughs> like, like uh, did you did you hear uh was that um, um steve steve is saying it would prevent the enemy from being able to park cl any closer to us and the thing is the thing that people miss about this whole isis deal is that these people are 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 taking heads right and what i'm wondering is have they just like decided that there's still a Highlander out there, and they're trying to find him. <laughs> I mean, I mean, is that the thing? There can is, be only one. Is Connor McCloud still walking around <laughs> out there somewhere? And they're trying to take his head. I, that's the only thing I can figure out. There and the other one. thing that I, the other thing that I don't get, is that there's all of this, like debate and discussion about about what should be done. I think it's pretty clear what should be done. <laughs> like like let's face it folks. 
if uh, if we've got people from every nation getting their heads cut off, why don't we all just like decide to actually band together as a as a world power and take these people out? This is what I love about politics. You discuss for four hundred and fifty thousand years, and then by the time you come to a consensus. The problem has solved itself. <laughs> like, like that's politics for you. I don't care what what country you're from, where you live. Everybody's talking about this. Why are we talking? Let's just go take them out. And I know that I sound like George Bush. I know that's what I sound like. I can't help it. I'm from Texas. We shoot <laughs> crap. That's yeah. what we do. If something is bothering us, we just kill it. That, that's you know, that's actually, kind of... i i have a I have a genuine real solution for. It. I wanted to mention this is um, the people of ISIS. They have a problem with uh, some of the Kurdish uh, soldiers. Apparently, if you get shot by a woman, you don't go to heaven. And of course, at the moment of your death, if your body's defiled by ham or or pork of any kind you don't go to heaven what we need is to build a female group of of what do they call them dream berets or something like that and just give them you know bullets that are laced with bacon they <laughs> will run like <laughs> shit <laughs> there's, 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 there's also another way out of it um you know we could also arm them with pork body armor the only problem is <laughs> Is, is that I don't know about you people, but I would I love bacon and I would want to eat my way out. <laughs> like, like, You're not supposed to eat your ammunition. <laughs> That's the problem with bacon. So it's too good, yummy. dude. It's so good. How could you uh, not? But like I, I know that there are um, I know there are people in the world and lots <laughs> of people that are healthier than me that don't eat meat. Which, 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 I I would love to do because I would I know I would be a lot healthier, but I I just I just I think I could give up everything else except bacon. I mean, uh. for crying out loud, when when you go when you go to an ice cream store and they actually have a bacon flavored ice cream. You know, there's a lot of people that have got a serious problem. Okay, think, it's not just me. Think of it, bacon it, this way: you add bacon to salad to make it taste better. You don't add salad to anything to make it taste better. <laughs> yes. You know, think of it that way. See, the thing with salad is, salad you eat because you really, really have to, and you put all of that crap on top of it to make it edible. That's yeah. what it is. And, yeah. and the thing, uh, the thing that I, because I really do, I need to eat healthier because I'm a guy in a wheelchair. I don't get a lot of exercise. I could very easily be 400 pounds. Like, yeah. I could be 400 pounds and nobody test, would say test, anything. Test. There we go. Is that Doc? Is Doc yeah, in the building? Oh, is that Doc? Be Doc. I, I, he's, in, he's in Second Life. Yay. Yeah, as as and an outside a second ago. All right, I'm telling him. All right. Yeah, that's what you get for upgrading to the new version before you test anything. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, I, I don't know. I had to ask if that was Doc because he's got he's got the uh, he's got the bedroom voice working tonight. You folks hear that? He, 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 he sounds like an audible reader. What is up with that? I heard him talk <laughs> enough to hear better. Hey, for 250 a minute, what do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> is that all you're charging, dude? I think oh, my God. God. You I can do even... better than that, Doc. You're blowballing yourself. Oh, but that's I, like 5,000 Lindens, isn't it? That's got to be worth <laughs> something. <laughs> I don't I don't I'm, I'm, Totally I'm, 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 I'm. All right, all right. If you're gonna make fun of me, dude, I'll get you the stage. I really will. <laughs> don't, don't. I mean, I mean, I, I know I sound, I know I sounded like Rocky Balboa there for a second, but it, it happened. It's, uh, it's, it's part of being handicapped. It, it just is. Aww. 
Uh, oh. We love you, Jamie. But I, I know you got to see, that's the other thing about being handicapped. If you if you even have the slightest amount of fake pity for yourself, everybody goes, <laughs> oh, you're totally okay. You're fine. <laughs> okay. Really, really, I want to show you how we're not prejudiced against handicapped people. <laughs> Doc Fred, you're, you're the one person that, 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 that should look at me and should be like, dude, you're an idiot. Shut up and get off the stage. <laughs> I, I'm an occupational therapist, too. I, that's, I know about that. Stuff. See, I'm a conscientious see, objector. There you go. <laughs> see, here's the thing with the, the occupation. <laughs> I, I, see, I did not realize I did not realize that Fran was an occupational therapist. Um, <laughs> and, and, and when you're me, when you're a guy in a wheelchair, an occupational therapist, when they come at you, you feel like, You've got Hitler coming at you trying to put you <laughs> in a gas chamber. That's what it feels yeah. like because you're like, oh, shit, is she going to try and help me figure out how to buck my shirt? That'll only <laughs> take two and a half days. That's, that's what... Oh, it's and, so nice that somebody knows what an OT really is. I do. I've done it my entire <laughs> life. And, and all, all I do, all, all I do is when I Get see tortured. one coming – when I see one coming, I go as fast as I can possibly go the <laughs> other way. <laughs> Here I am, and your shirt's not button right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's sad, ladies and gentlemen? If I turned on the camera, she would be correct. <laughs> My shirt is not buttoned correctly. She would be totally correct. And, and see, this is why I run away from them. They really do. They scare me. I think I have gotten a complex my entire life from physical therapists and occupational therapists, which makes me sad because they're all women. Like, you, you, never, you never really find a guy that does physical therapy or occupational therapy. The only problem is... Fran may be the only one that I've ever met that has any sort of, like, bedside manner at all. <laughs> like, like, you see this woman coming at you in a white coat, and you know she's going to make you get down on the floor and do some stuff. And that <laughs> might sound really sexy until she talks to you, and then you're like, yeah, I'm not touching that. Uh, it's just kind of the way it works. Uh, but... A comedy show or a support group? Well, let's face it. <laughs> I, I'm gonna ask you a very, I'm gonna ask you a very simple question, and Doc can repeat it in a little bit. Um, yeah. What do you want it to be, honey? It can be whatever you want it to be. <laughs> yes, because that's what we do here. Um, we, I, I actually, I actually have to be honest. My my entire life, my entire life, I have spent with two goals. I have tried my entire life to get to the point where I don't sound like an alcoholic, which I still haven't uh, solved. You you can probably tell I've I've got a little slur. I've got some stuff going on, and 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 my other goal is to. Find a woman who will completely and totally admit that she really enjoys being in my lap. Right? <laughs> Without being paid twenty dollars every five minutes. <laughs> Poor man. Dude, dude. No, no, no. No, see what see what see what you're losing there? I'm I'm handicapped. I don't pay for anything. They'll sit there. They just look really uncomfortable while they're doing it. Oh. <laughs> because it's like Fran said, it's all about the pity. They're like, yeah. well, he's crippled. I got to give uh, him something. Got to give him but a freebie. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Pity fuck. Pity it's, fuck. Yeah. The, the, only, the only problem is, and it's the honest truth, I'm, I'm single. I'm 35 and single. I've been single my entire life. And, 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 
the only reason why is a guy in a wheelchair trying to make a move on a woman is like a three-toed sloth trying to climb a tree. It just <laughs> ain't happening because <laughs> if, if, if you don't meet a woman that's four feet tall, they're all taller than you are, and you have to ask them to come down to talk to you. It's impossible. Um, uh. What what I need is like what I need is like an elevator on the chair where I just push a button and the seat goes up. That's what I need. That'd be cool. I I would like to have one of those. I really would. I would also. <laughs> I would also really like to have a chair that I could just like put on autopilot, you know, and I don't even care if it runs over people because to <laughs> it me, it just that's, adds more to the crowd. That's right. That's right. <laughs> one and of yeah, us, one of us. Like, I mean, I mean, let's, let's be totally honest. A handicapped person's goal in life is to make everybody else handicapped. If you've ever gotten your feet run over by a guy in a wheelchair, I promise <laughs> you, gentlemen, it was on purpose. <laughs> They'll look at you and go, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Yes, they did. I promise uh, you they did. The, they're, they're, they're there there is no care. doubt that they, uh, that they meant to do that because, let's face it, when everybody in the world is taller than you and they can run faster than you, the only way that you can equal the playing field is to make everybody crippled. <laughs> and so that's the goal in life of a handicapped guy. Real quick, before I get off the stage, shut up and give the stage to Doc because he is here. Uh, mm -hmm. And Doc's never here. Like, I, I, I got to tell you, Doc, there was a rumor that you were coming into the building. And, uh, and I... I was actually really feeling good about that, and uh, I told Cowboy I would do a little comedy, and he was like, oh yeah, well, you can do some stand-up till Doc gets here, and then I'm going to give him the stage for the last 20 minutes. So, uh, <laughs> you, you are the man that everybody misses, sir. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, uh, we appreciate that you it's are supply here. and demand. If I show yeah. up, less you want me more. <laughs> See, that, that, that's the way it works. as much and so that they just make themselves available because you always seem to have women when you're here. They're like, all and, <laughs> and I'm not and I'm not crippled either. How about that? How's that work? <laughs> you're short though right now. <laughs> I'm short, yeah. Well, you know, you cannot be crippled and be short. You're okay with that. It's when that you're crippled and you're short is when you get screwed. That's what happens. <laughs> uh, crippled. <laughs> yeah. Hi, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, almost tall. Look at this. I'm almost as yeah, tall as Doc. Doc. What's up yeah. with Doc? I'm almost as tall as he is. Everybody, where did he go? He crashed. I'm no, sitting down. down. Oh, oh, he sat, he sat down. down. Oh, I'm staring at Michael Jackson's <laughs> ass here. He's shorter. All right. Oh, he's got he's got my he's got this Michael Please Jackson. Please stop touching me. Now. That's a bad touch. <laughs> <laughs> I need an adult. I need an adult. All right. All right. All right. All that. All, all that. No, he's like sitting on that pond. I give you Doc Grun. Come on here for a month. You rearrange the fucking furniture. What's going on here? <laughs> Jesus Take it over for All right. Um, hello, my name is Doc, and I'm a comaholic. Okay. <laughs> I haven't I haven't been here for a while because I'm doing the long drive again, and people in D.C. get stupid this time of year. Um, uh, yeah, and it's not even a it's it's not even a um, an election year. So, uh, uh, real quick, I'm going to give you a little bit of update because there's been some exciting news, okay? I have good news on my book, okay? Uh, things are going real well. I had a good meeting with my publisher this weekend, and it's soon going to be in print, okay? Yay! I don't, I, I don't have the exact date. I know it's going to be in the wintertime. Uh, when exactly does hell freeze over? Anybody know? <laughs> is it going to be an ebook too like can we get it on uh on we're Kindle and the other stuff well we're exploring many aspects in fact they've already asked me to do a treatment for a uh a second book 
to sell it as a kind of a franchise, which the second book's going to end up being a prequel, and the third will end up being a a sequel. But uh, (laughs) it's getting some looked. Um, And, of course, we'll be launching a fundraising site, and I'm going to start a blog up, and uh, there'll be a website coming up. Can't you just do the story in the right order? No, I don't like that. No. (laughs) That's not the way you do it anymore. You do oh, you do three, and that. then you do three before that that are stupid, and then you do three yeah. after that that are done by Disney. That's how it's done. Yeah, okay. I thought it was done right. Yeah. So um, we're going to be launching a fundraising site to get st- things started, and it's looking. It was going to be an animated series. It's looking like it could possibly be live action. So oh, right. when we get the Kickstarter thing going, we'll be uh, we'll be. Uh, It'll be very interesting, and we'll be dropping some teasers here and there. So that's that's where that goes. But um, hopefully, I'll get it. I'll get it out before my retirement party, uh, because <laughs> that's how I feel about this thing with Thinker. Yeah, It'll be I've up been just before I've been, we retire. I'm doing a lot of driving, and I have time to to uh, to do a lot of thinking, and I think about stupid shit. Okay, all right. Um, the English language is, you know, I have a couple girls that are uh, from different countries here. Uh, Seb the Dio over here, she's from Romania, and she always says, uh, I mean, her favorite saying is, you fucking Americans, you don't talk like you write, because we write one <laughs> thing and we say and we say something else, okay? So here, here are some, I picked these up, here are some phrases that are from other countries that don't translate well into English, okay? Okay. Um, this is an Armenian or Turkish saying. Stop ironing my head. <laughs> Stop ironing my head is a phrase that's used on <laughs> nagging wives or anybody else who keeps pestering you. As in, what do you want? Stop ironing my head. You've got creases in your brain. you got to iron it yeah. out. Here's one, here's one which I, I know Jamie's going to take the wrong way. Are you still riding that goat? <laughs> That's actually a Cheyenne Indian phrase for a charming way of asking, are you still with the same partner? Evidently, the Cheyenne <laughs> are very <laughs> respectful people. That. Are you writing, are you still writing that goat? <laughs> oh, okay. Here's a Hindu oh, saying. God. Here's a Hindu saying. What would a monkey know about the taste of ginger? <laughs> now, that's an insulting phrase to discredit someone else's opinion by suggesting they don't know anything about it. Like, do you, how do you like your new bag? Oh, what would the monkey know about the taste of ginger? <clears throat> okay, now here's a check and a finish phrase. Don't walk around the hot porridge. <laughs> the okay. fuck does that mean? Okay, well, what it means is don't beat around the bush, okay? It encourages a person to get to the point, especially if it's a hot topic, all right? So all right. here's one that is Ukrainian. Work is not a wolf. It won't run off into the woods. <laughs> I like that. Okay. One. I like yeah. yeah. I.e., you can always return to a piece of work later on. Now, here's one that is going to be taken the wrong way, I'm sure. The turtle is shrouded. The turtle, the turtle is shrouded. Down? It's a Cheyenne Indian phrase for it's foggy outside. I don't know where oh. the turtle comes from. Where the fuck does the turtle come from? Okay. Here we go. Chinese. Are we breathing through the same nostril? <laughs> Probably has something to do with air pollution. Actually, it means pretty much the same thing as are we on the same page? Uh, or, are, or are we smelling the same fart or something like that? I'm, I'm not uh, sure. I'm not sure. Really... Okay. okay. Here's another one from the Cheyenne Indian. The Cheyennes are pretty uh, funny people. My tapeworm can almost talk by itself. <laughs> Anyone from those mischievous Cheyennes, this phrase implies that you are very hungry and excuses your stomach growling. Sorry, I'm Uh, so hungry that my tapeworm can eat almost talk by itself. That reminds me of Curly from the Three Stooges. I'm so hungry I could eat a I could eat the boink toast and the rotten egg. What by a boink toast and a rotten egg? Yeah, I got a tapeworm. It's good enough for him. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Here's a here's a here's a Dutch. He's polar bearing. What the fuck does that mean? It's a Let Dutch phrase for pacing down. up and down. Okay. He's polar bearing. He's pacing up and down. Here's a French phrase. I have other cats to whip. Yeah. 
that one. I'm just gonna oh, I have it. other cats to whip. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> the hint. That's, that's, I yeah, brought my own. Far. I brought my own yeah, fan just... crub with me. Yeah. Here's a Hindu one. Here's a Hindu one. He's shitting embers. Oh, ouch. <laughs> God ouch. damn. Somebody He's ate shitting embers. Food. He's extremely angry. Okay. Here's one that's oh, Italian. Okay. For all the Italians. For all the Italians in the house, you have a ham around your ears. <laughs> it means you're not seeing or hearing clearly. You have ham around your ears. Your ears. Okay. <laughs> Ew. Here's a Japanese one. Even monkeys fall from trees. <laughs> it means even okay. experts can screw up. Oh, okay. Uh, I like that. Yeah, that one I can hmm. get there. And uh, here's a Spanish one. I'm eating the head. Okay. okay. I'm eating the head. It means oh. I'm thinking. I'm wondering oh. whose head would you be eating <laughs> Your brain. while you're thinking. Brain. Okay, now. All right, so there's oh, some weird sayings. Um, but as I said, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that my, my, <laughs> uh, my book will be out before I retire. And I'm starting to think, because I'm, I'm doing the long slide down, the long gentle slope down, and starting to gain speed. So Got you start you thinking book. about... You start thinking about retirement, and uh, you know there's some some thoughts that go through my head. Like the best time to start thinking about your retirement is before the boss does. Okay. <laughs> Me, I always arrive late at the office, but I make up for it by leaving early. So uh, okay. <laughs> now think about think about this: when a man retires, and there's no longer a, a matter of urgent importance, the fuck do I give him a watch? What's the point? <laughs> Never figured that one. Here's one from Will Rogers. Half our life is spent trying to find something to do with the time we've rushed through life trying to save. <laughs> that is definitely a Will Rogers quote. And it's time I stepped aside for a less experienced and a less able man. <laughs> <laughs> I've, had, I've taught a couple of those. A man is known by the company that keeps him on after retirement age. Amen. <laughs> Here's one from Groucho and Marx. There's one thing I always want to do before I quit. Retire. <laughs> Retirement kills more people than hard work ever did. Did you know that? That's a fact. <laughs> There's mo uh, the, uh, the money's not any better in retirement, but the hours are better. Okay. Uh. Retirement is wonderful. It's like doing nothing without worrying about getting caught at it. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the occasional heart attack. I feel as young, young as I ever did. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Dick Cheney quote. Yeah. I enjoy waking up not having to go to work. I do it three or four times a day. <laughs> what, here's a question for you. Where do gardeners go when they retire? What do they do when they retire? Okay. Now, you're probably retired if you and your teeth don't sleep together. Think about that. You're probably retired if you're probably retired if you try to straighten out the wrinkles in your socks and discover <laughs> you aren't wearing any. Oh. If you're retired, if it takes two tries to get up from the couch, and it does for that me right now, it does, you're probably retired if your idea of a night out is sitting on the patio. You're retired if you step off a curb and look down one more time to make certain the street is still there. You're probably retired if getting lucky means you remember where you left your car in the parking lot. Yeah, baby, it's a hell of a day. You're probably retired if everything hurts, and what doesn't hurt? Done work. <laughs> Here's one for you, thinker. You're probably retired if you sink your teeth into a steak and they stay there. <laughs> You're probably retired if you wonder how you could be over the hill when you don't remember being on top of it. Baby, that's for me. <laughs> and you're probably retired if you have more hair in your ears and nose than on your head. I'm starting that transition right now. Now. How many retirees does it change a time? Uh, take a change of light bulb? Only one, but it might take all day. <laughs> <laughs> among, re um, among retirees, what's considered formal attire? Tied shoes. <laughs> and how many days in a retiree's week? <laughs> Six <laughs> Saturdays and one Sunday. Uh. <laughs> when is a retiree's bedtime? Three hours after he falls asleep on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> So that's that's what I have to look forward to in about years. Okay, so um, 
in the meantime, I still have a little bit of breath left. So we are going to do a one-month-old uh, delayed version of the lightning round. And then I'm going to turn it back round. over to our host, Cat Boy. Okay? Here we go. <laughs> Yeah. Tonight, President Obama will make a primetime speech about how we're going to deal with violent extremists and their sickening behavior. And when he's done talking about the NFL, he'll talk about ISIS. <laughs> the NFL is, of course, <laughs> the NFL is, of course, coming under a lot of fire. Today it came out that law enforcement sent a copy of a Ray Rice video to NFL headquarters back in April. Then the NFL commissioner apologized, saying the video got buried in the stack of other illegal things NFL players are doing. Uh. The New York Times had to issue a correction after an article referred to Dick Cheney as President of the United States. The yeah. Times apologized to Dick Cheney and changed his title to Former President of the United States. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Mike Tyson was in Canada yesterday and actually met up with Toronto Mayor Rob Ford. Of yes, course, it, it really got weird when someone yelled, Love you in the hangover, and they both yelled, Thanks! <laughs> <laughs> Joe Biden was in Baltimore this weekend to celebrate the 200th anniversary of the Star Spangled Banner. Yeah, 200 years, or roughly how long it takes today's pop singers to finish the national anthem. Today, the New York <laughs> Times had to issue a correction after mistakenly referred to Dick Cheney as a former president. Of course, George W. Bush made that same mistake all the time. A federal uh, investigation has found the Department of Homeland Security is, quote, ill-prepared for a potential disease pandemic. I'm not huh. sure I agree. They did a great job of wiping out Bieber fever. What do you think? Yeah, Yesterday, Mike Tyson was yeah. in Toronto again with Mayor Rob Ford. It was a meeting between one of the most dangerous heavyweights ever and Mike Tyson. Uh, earlier tonight, <laughs> <laughs> earlier tonight, President Obama spoke to Americans. Obama's getting tough with ISIS. He's now going to force them to sell their NBA team. Watch out for this. <laughs> Here's Obama's three-part plan. First, we're going to gather intelligence. Next, we're going to launch airstrikes. And third, his plan is to lose the midterm elections. So he's got a full plate ahead of him. Yeah. The president assured Americans that while we face no immediate threat from ISIS, we've got a ton of bombs sitting around, so we're going to find some fucking way to use them. Guess who may be partnering to fight ISIS? None other than Iran. Iran used to be our enemy. Back like, what, last week? But now we're, we're upgrading our status relationship to frenemy. It's never good uh, news when the president addresses a nation in prime time. He never comes out and says, great job, everybody. I'm throwing you all a pizza party. Apple announced the iPhone 6, which they say has a more durable screen that won't crack or scratch easily. Or as your kids put it, challenge accepted. Apple <laughs> promised. <laughs> Yeah. Apple promised less cracking. Then Toronto Mayor Rob Ford said, hey, that's my campaign slogan. <laughs> <laughs> the royal couple had to keep Kate's pregnancy secret from the rest of the royal family. And that's, that's not easy because Prince Charles is all ears. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> on Friday, President Obama made a surprise visit to Stonehenge on his way back from the NATO summit in Wales. And even crazier, today he made a surprise visit to the White House. The Department ah. of Transportation is considering building a new high-speed train that could get people from D.C. to Baltimore in 15 minutes. It'll get, you out of, it'll get you out of Washington in 15 minutes. Or as President Obama calls that, still not fast enough. Uh, ASC no, no, no. is coming out with a spinoff of The Walking Dead. Listen to this, folks. That will show the apocalypse in other parts of the world. It's called The Nightly News. <laughs> <laughs> Reportedly, the identity of Jack the Ripper, who killed five people in London, finally has been revealed. Did you hear about this? After yeah. hearing about it, the commissioner of the NFL suspended him for two games. <laughs> <laughs> On this day in 1974, President Gerald Ford pardoned Richard Nixon. A lot of people think Nixon's trouble was for Watergate, but it wasn't. It was for wearing that damn tan suit. <clears throat> this weekend, a Native American group call are gathered outside the White House or, or outside of the Houston Washington game to protest the Redskins nickname. And a group of Cowboys wide receivers gathered outside of the Dallas San Francisco game because that's where most of Tony Romo's passes were landing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, happy birthday to New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, who turns 52 years old this week. The star of TLC show Cake Boss is actually making the cake for Chris Christie's birthday. In fact, I hear he's even making the cake in the shape of Christie's favorite thing, cake. <laughs> <clears throat> and President Obama is getting tough with Vladimir Putin. Boy, what a bad guy that guy is, that Putin. Obama's really getting tough with him. Now he's wearing a much more aggressive shade of beige. What do you think, folks? Good to be back. <laughs> Look for the book. 
hopefully before I retire. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Yeah. Okay. All right.